I'm Pat Mayo with your DraftKings picks for the 2021 Northern Trust top to bottom. There's a lot of players over $10,000 this week in the first leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs, but that's because there's only 124 players in the field. Top 65 and ties end up making the cut. So a very high percentage of the players are actually going to play the weekend this week. So you can take a few more shots down the board, hope to get lucky, and really pile up at the top. As much win equity as you can jam into your lineups this week is where you want to go. Above $10,000, I'll take the guy at the very minimum. I love Kawa Morikawa this week. He's 10-4. You can go with him. So you can actually pair him up if you want to with Rory McIlroy at $10,000. was top 10 the last time that this tournament was contested at Liberty National Golf Club back in 2019 when Patrick Reed was the winner. It just seems like too much of a cheap price for Rory. We're essentially getting old Rory stats with new Rory pricing. Rory, the ball striking was on point in Memphis at the WGC when we saw him. The chipping and the putting was not. That's not usually the biggest problem in the world for Rory, so you wouldn't expect that to continue forward week over week, tournament over tournament. So as long as he can keep those ball striking numbers elevated and just median putt and median chip to what his baseline normally is, he's probably going to win this tournament. So $10,000, Rory. Going to the nines, you got Daniel Berger at $9,100. That's a cheap price for Daniel Berger, considering he has three top tens in his last three strong field events. Top 10 in Memphis at the WGC. Top 10 at the Open Championship. Top 10 at the U.S. Open. Now, he did come in the 30s at the John Deere Classic, but hey, it turns out he only wants to compete in these elite fields, and this is an elite field. When you go back and look at the past winners of the Northern Trust, it's the cream of the crop on the PGA Tour. Only two players ever in the history of this event, spanning 16 years, have been ranked outside the top 25 in the world rankings. So you're going to want to jam in as many as those guys as possible, and you can do that with the help of someone like Aaron Wise. He's $6,600 this week on DraftKings. And like I said, a higher percentage of the players make the cut this week. So just pray he doesn't put himself out of this tournament. The last time that it was contested in 2019, Aaron Wise was actually fifth in the field and birdies are better gained against everyone. He just made a bunch of bogeys. And a lot of that has to do with his horrible putting. But at the Wyndham Championship, he actually switched to a broomstick putter. And after losing 10 strokes on the greens in his previous two events, he actually gained at Sedgefield a week ago. Is that going to continue? I mean, probably not, but as long as he's not losing five strokes per event, he's actually striking the ball well enough that he can probably compete in this tournament. And for his price point, he's definitely going to outscore that position. He doesn't need to come inside the top five. A T17 from Aaron Wise at $6,600 means he's probably like 11th or 12th in DraftKings scoring, and that's plenty for the price point that you're getting him at right now at $6,600. Plus the caveat of always plays well on the coast and any coastal event that's just been a thing for whatever reason. When the wind picks up, he plays a little bit better. And strong field events. He doesn't get invited to many strong field events, but the past two ones that he's played in, Memorial and at Quail Hollow, long, strong field courses. He's come inside the top 10. So Aaron Wise, $6,600 for a full field breakdown. Check out the Pat Mayo experience on the Mayo Media Network and my cheat sheet up now on DraftKingsPlaybook.com.